Feldman, affectionately known as Dr. Bonnie 360 on Twitter. And I'm delighted to be back at Stanford Medicine X to update you on the next chapter of the invisible epidemic of autoimmune disease and ask for your help. My audacious vision is to reimagine research, diagnosis, and clinical care for all autoimmune diseases. This actually began at Stanford Medicine X thanks to some of the people in this room. And it continued through Stanford Medicine X last year, where now we have a mission which is to empower autoimmune patients with the tools, coaching, and community support to better self-manage their health. But if you look at the title, Saving Our Children, How to Reverse the Autoimmune Disease Epidemic, this is not something that a small team can accomplish on our own. So I'm asking for two kinds of collaborations. If you would like to build new products and services from scratch and the ground up specifically for autoimmune patients, please come and speak to me. But if you're a company and you've already built a product, perhaps in an auxiliary market, such as chronic pain, chronic fatigue, or even thinking broadly in cancer or wellness, perhaps there's a way that we can work together to tweak these for autoimmune patients. These goals are both personal and professional. My own family struggles with autoimmune disease on a daily basis. And for better or for worse, my grandkids have gotten a double dose of these genes. But more importantly, there's an increasing epidemic or increasing incidence of autoimmune diseases in young adults. These are kids or teens. And if we do nothing now, they will suffer for more than 50 years. So what can we do together to meet the needs of this untapped, growing market? Did you know that there's over 100 different kinds of autoimmune diseases? They affect more than 16% of the US population, which is more than cancer and heart disease combined. In aggregate, autoimmune diseases are one of the top 10 leading causes of death in women under the age of 64. And in children, these are kids under 10, the incidence of IBD has doubled in the last 10 years. And these are old numbers, so it's probably even bigger. But in addition to this exploding market, we also have skyrocketing costs. We already know that the cost to treat chronic disease is 80% of our total health care budget. And it's expected that if we don't do anything, this will increase by the year 2023 to over $4 trillion. But what does this actually mean for autoimmune disease? I keep speaking about chronic disease. And aha, that was part of the problem. So I put on my research hat, which has been well honed by many years as a Wall Street analyst. And I dug and I dug through the incidence, prevalence, and cost numbers for chronic disease. And I was not shocked, but somewhat surprised to find that we still count autoimmune disease by body part. Our failure to aggregate the data has obscured a public health crisis larger than cancer and heart disease combined. This also affects research funding. Cancer, with its aggregated data, gets $7 billion from the NIH, whereas autoimmune disease, without its aggregated data, gets less than $1 billion, and this includes type 1 diabetes. So how can we work together to serve the needs of this growing market, reduce the costs, and save our children. We live in incredible times, and the pieces of the puzzle may be right in front of us if we can just figure out how to put them together in new and different ways. We, at this moment in time, unlike others, we have tremendous convergence and opportunity we have incremental understandings of big data and big science. And in particular, big science affects autoimmune patients because every day we are learning more about the microbiome. 
we now know that the gut is an organ of immunity, and there are brain-gut connections that could be very important for all autoimmune patients. Yet, despite these incredible advances, it still takes the average autoimmune patient three and a half years and over five doctors to even get a diagnosis. And along the way, sadly, I must say, 45% of them, mostly women, are accused of being hypochondriacs. Does this seem right to you? We need to figure out a better way. So last year at Medicine X, we decided to ask the autoimmune community, many of you here and others, what they needed and wanted. Launching a survey on social media was a very pleasant upside surprise. We got hundreds of responses. And not only were autoimmune patients willing, eager, and able to answer our open-ended questions, but they gave us detailed responses about their daily struggles. We saw things like, in seven years and more than 13 doctors, I'm still trying to find an answer. Or once it's labeled, it's hard to unwind and change course. Some of the others that were very, <laughs> a big problem, some of the respondents says it took 15 years of misdiagnosis and I'm still working on five more years to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Or another person said, after losing my job, my quality of life, it was only when I took things in my own hands did I start to make progress. Similarly, the respondents to the survey also saw avenues to improve care. They wanted better collaboration and coordination, and they suggested that doctors have the opportunity to update their knowledge on autoimmune disease. So we studied the survey responses, and we organized three themes as a jumping-off point for our workshop that was held here last year at MedEx. And we put the themes into the first one we called Diagnosis Purgatory. This is the opportunity to shorten that time to diagnosis and improve care. The next one we called the Tower of Babel, and this was the chance to get better care coordination and collaboration. The third theme was Root Cause Resolution. The workshop was fantastic. Thank you, Medicine X. The room was a buzz. We split up into groups. There were sticky notes all over the place. But more importantly, the participants put their heart and soul into this work as we tried to move from problem identification to an action plan. And after the groups came up with their best ideas, we looked at some of them. So for diagnosis purgatory, the best idea was to create a center of autoimmunity which is filled with multidisciplinary teams that could include either several specialists and or auxiliaries meeting together in one place with the patient to shorten the time to both diagnosis and better treatment. F to, for the care coordination and collaboration opportunity, they suggested that we could appoint a quarterback, a special person, that would help us during these difficult times. And for root cause, autoimmune patients challenged the medical paradigm to move from reductionist single-organ thinking and adopt a bigger systems biology approach to autoimmune disease in order to understand the root causes of autoimmune pathology. In other words, our patients knew exactly how to be good, forward-looking thinkers. If you had asked me last year if I was optimistic, I might have said yes and no. But the workshop has validated many of our previous suggestions for change. In 2014 at Stanford Medicine X, we saw the need to integrate lifestyle modification into autoimmune disease, conventional medicine, and acknowledge its influence on autoimmunity. This is pictured here in the 2014 picture, and look how we envisioned it. The patient is in collaboration with their healer, which may or may not be a physician. We have teams that look at the whole body. 
We have the muscular skeletal integrity team. Perhaps there's physical therapists or acupuncturists or just an entire team. We have the food as medicine team, and we have the well-being team. The good news is, even though this sounds forward-thinking, in, in a minute we're going to hear about some startup companies that are actually thinking along these lines. But after the, our 2014 vision, we went back to research. And by now, we had attended about 60 digital health meetings, mm, interviewed maybe 200 startup companies, read hundreds and hundreds of journal articles, and also learned quite a bit on the online summits about functional medicine. And so we envisioned what we could think about for autoimmune patients. And our 2015, shows a view of how we could create a center that brings the best of functional and conventional medicine to autoimmune patients at the same time. So now, what does this mean? Can we be hopeful? When one begins to think about integrated autoimmune medicine, there is plenty of white space for opportunity. But we can be a little bit hopeful because this is a picture of some of the new companies that are beginning to work in and around the problem space. And for simplicity of discussion, I have grouped them in terms of digital therapeutics, digital conversations, and digital checkups. The ones that we're calling digital therapeutics are taking our concept of lifestyle modification with evidence-based and creating companies. So Sleepio is in sleep, Curbo is in pediatric obesity, and Omada is in pre-diabetes prevention. This is a great beginning. These are point solutions. Of course, we would like to see more of them. We would like to see them integrated, and what is missing is the muscular skeletal components of it all where structure meets function. But still, it's an okay beginning. We can get more excited about our digital conversations because those are patient communities. And being a chronic disease patient is very hard work. We need all the help and support we can get. And these patient communities serve a very important function as patients come to get knowledge, support, encouragement between appointments. On that theme, I'm very excited about the new coaching platforms shown here. They range in flavor from high touch to high tech. Mimey is more high touch, Vita does both, Lark is completely automated. But the concept of coaching for autoimmune patients is key because once again, we need support, we need encouragement, it's hard work. And anything that we can imagine that will give us these additional tools will be helpful. But the most exciting companies are the ones on the bottom. They're beginning to cross the bridges, to cross the abyss, as I used to say, or connect the dots between digital therapeutics, digital conversations, and digital checkups. And these bring new business models at and around the periphery to autoimmune disease. The first one here is Partsley Health, and they're taking a functional medicine approach, and they're also using a new system, which is um, a monthly fee or a yearly fee. Twine Health is using a primary care approach but they have a coaching platform underneath. So once again, providing that layer of extra support that autoimmune patients near, need. Deer Health is created interesting analytics to prove how some of these new ways to deliver care, to personalize, integrate, these types of systems are going to save us money. And Open Medicine Institute is doing it all. They're using advanced testing, such as genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, microbiomics, in any way possible to treat the most difficult autoimmune patients. So where does this leave us today? How can we work together to come up with new 
data, digital tools, create new products and services to prevent, treat, and reverse autoimmunity. Is this actually possible, or am I an unrealistic dreamer? Given that we have all these companies now working at the periphery, I would say this is possible. In fact, many people often ask me, why am I advocating for such a major change? But after seven careers ranging from clinical dentistry to Wall Street to investor relations, communications, marketing, business development, and sales, the answer is somewhat simple. Like you, I am a patient in a broken system. But more importantly, I am also the proud mom of four fabulous adult children. And a surprise, I'm a grandma. So for all you moms, dads, grandmas, granddads, makers, fixers, whatever we call ourselves, whenever we see a big problem, perhaps our first response is someone else will fix it. But maybe our second response is no one's going to fix it unless we fix it together now. And that's how I feel about this. And I want to know how we can come together and collaborate in an ensemble to save our children and reverse the autoimmune epidemic. So please, if you're a company working in the space or you're a person who wants to build new products and services, please come and speak with me. Together, I do believe the time is now to change the health trajectory of our children. Thank you. You can reach me at Dr. Bonnie. 360 at gmail.com and always on Twitter.